I'm Rob Jones, and welcome to Tech Talk on Loop TV. This edition is the last in a trilogy of episodes looking at Propellerhead's latest software application, Record. This time, we're going to continue looking at some processing and routing techniques, as well as checking out automation and mastering and exporting your final track. So let's crack on with it. First then, we're going to look at how to sidechain one of the synths on a bridge section I've arranged here. I want this second part, which is a sustained note, to change in dynamics with the other parts, which are playing staccato chords for the first bar. The way I can do this is to send the signal from the synth track next to it here, which is playing the staccato notes, into the sidechain input of a compressor that's processing the other synth part playing the sustain note. Then, when this synth plays, the sustained synth will duck in level. You can do this on the rack here by taking the direct outputs of the first synth and feeding them into the sidechain input on the second synth track. Now, if we set up a loop of the first bar and play just those tracks, then turn on the compressor on the second synth track, you can hear that the ducking effect is created. The only problem here is that once you've routed that first track into the second, the main signal path through the first track won't be heard. In other words, the main output of the track is just going to the side chain of the second synth track, and not going to the master track of the mixer as it would normally. This means that when we solo the track, you can only hear the send effect signals, as these run in parallel to the main signal passing through the track. So if we want to hear the dry signal as well, then there are a few ways of going about it. Firstly, you could use one of the send effects buses to blend the dry signal back in. If you're not using all the send effects, then you can control click or right click on a PC on a track to bring up the context menu, and then select create send effects. Then select any of the effects here. You'll see the effect pop up on the next available slot on the mixer. Now just set the effect to bypass, so the signal passes straight through without being processed. Then, you can increase the amount of dry signal you hear by turning up that send effect style. This is all good as long as you have a free send effect slot. But if you don't, there are a few different ways you can do it. Another way is to split the signal coming out of the direct output using a spider audio splitter, and then send it into the sidechain input on the synth track, and the audio input on a new track on the mixer. To do this, you just create a new mixer channel. Now, on the rack, we can create a splitter, and then route the direct output into that and then into the sidechain of the second synth track and the inputs of the new mixer channel. Now if we solo the first synth part and the new mixer channel, you can hear if I turn off the reverb send that the main track output can be heard on the new mixer channel. So you can set the level of that with respect to the level on the synth track to balance between wet and dry. Now let's have a look at parameter automation, which is where you make changes to different parameters on an instrument, the mixer, or an effect, and those changes are recorded into your arrangement from where they can be edited. First, we're going to create a filter sweep on a synth track to go from the bridge back into a verse. The track we're going to use is this Thor track here, which is triggering an SFX patch, which has a slow amplitude attack anyway, so there's already a build up in level across the two bars. What we want to do is increase the filter cutoff as well, so that we get an increase in high frequency with level. This is easy to do with a parameter on an instrument. All you have to do is make sure the record parameter automation switch on the sequencer track here is on, and then take the track out of record, as you're not recording any MIDI data. Then hit record on the transport. 
If you look in the arrangement now, you can see that the sweep has been recorded onto its own automation lane. So, double-clicking it allows it to be edited either in the arrangement or by activating edit mode, which you can do by double-clicking the main MIDI clip on that track. Now you can change the curve in places by adding new automation events with the pencil tool and then dragging them to different values, or you can draw in a totally different curve. Holding down the Alt key, or Option key on a PC, whilst drawing an event, makes the curve stick to one value, which is good for writing in stepped increases rather than linear. Supposing we want the same filter sweep to occur on an audio track now, like our guitar part, and this is simple to do as well. First we need to select the guitar track and add the filter as an insert by double clicking it in the tool window. I'm going to set it to band pass for this sweep. Now to set up an automation lane for the frequency of the band, we just bring up the context menu on that parameter and then choose edit automation. An automation lane then appears in the sequencer. Now we can hold down alt and drag the automation from the Thor track over to the new automation lane and then that curve will be applied to the filter on the guitar. The only thing is we don't want the filter on the rest of the time. We just want it on for those two bars. So what we can do is set the filter to bypass, then bring up an automation lane for the bypass switch. Then we just draw in a clip, and now the three switch states can be drawn in as you can see. So we just set it to on across those two bars, and then after that point, it will return to bypass. Next thing I'm gonna show you is back in edit mode. I'm gonna select this organ part that's just been introduced into the verse. These MIDI notes were played in using a MIDI keyboard. So unlike when you play in notes with a computer keyboard, as shown in the first episode, the difference here of course is that the MIDI keyboard keys are dynamic. So not only are there differences in timing of the notes, but also level. As you can see we've got a series of chords with three notes in each. The first thing I want to change here is to make all the notes in the chords sound at the same time. Obviously notes can be dragged individually, but a time saver here can be found on the inspector which is the strip up here that shows you information about notes. If you select the notes in a chord, for example, you have the position, length, MIDI note, and velocity of one of the selected notes displayed, as well as a series of match value switches. Clicking on the match value switch after the position box then aligns all notes, which you can do for any chords that are particularly loose. Another thing you can do is select larger groups of notes and match the lengths, so there's more consistency there too. And you can also select the velocity bars down at the bottom and match those, so that all of the notes are at the same volume as well. Value matching can also be used on automation lanes. As you can see, we've got a pitch bend happening on each second chord. If we want to add consistency to each bend, then we just select the maximum values and click match. Then we can adjust them all as one. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to give your track that professional sound. In Record it's really quick and easy to apply some decent mastering to your track, even if you don't know about processing and effects. Back on the mixer, you'll notice on the master track that there is once again an insert effects section. This is for applying mastering effects to your final mix. It comes loaded with the default mastering suite, but you can also browse to another preset if you want to try a different sound. I quite like this brick wall and high band spread mastering preset for really filling out and fattening up tracks. You can turn on and off the different effects using the switches and then tweak the assigned parameters with the dials. Or if you want more control, then you can click on the master tracks rack switch and then show insert effects to see what's being applied. Hey.
it's a mess I must confess it's a dark outside it's wrong how do I expect to get anything done when I'm dreaming all day long You've also got the option of a compressor on the master output, which is activated on the desk here. So you have the choice between the Record M-Class compressor or the SSL desk emulation, both of which produce a good sound. Once you're happy with the sound, you can set the end position marker in your arrangement to the end of your song and then select export song as audio file from the file menu. This allows you to create an IF or WAV file for your track. So that was my guide to some of the basics as well as some more advanced techniques for producing music with record. It was my first real test of the software and I found it really fun and easy to use. It looks and sounds great and is user friendly whether you're a beginner or a more advanced user who wants to get in and wire things up your own way. For more information on Record, check the Propellerhead's website for all the latest news and updates. See you next time.